Wow, nice couch. Do my feet look big? I think everything on you looks big. Ew. It always has to go there, doesn't it? Yeah. I didn't say we showered together, I just said you'll be big on the couch, come on. All right, what do you think the... Uh, off to an awkward beginning. What do you, do you, do you ever imagine what the home life of Jane Cobb must have been like? Well, Joss, Joss and I had talked about that, if we had been, been able to go more episodes, uh, what his mom was like, what his dad was like, and we had theorized that perhaps he had come from a middle-class upbringing and had just dabbled in, you know, mercenary work in, in, his, in his imagination. And uh, so I was hoping that had it gone a little further, we would have actually met her, and it would have been someone like uh, a Jessica Tandy or... Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ruth Gordon, that sort of uh, that sort of type, yeah, that would have been great. You picture him then with brothers who are really on the up and up, you know, not actually out in the mercenary work, more like. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Seattle. Someone was very kind enough to come up to my table and. Uh, hand this t-shirt off to me, so I appreciate the gift, I love that. Damn it, Joss! And um, the brothers of Jane Cobb, huh, sounds like a musical. <laughs> I'd watch that. <laughs> step and dance, step and dance, he's a step and dance. How, how loyal do you think uh, Jane was? One, one of the big internet debates that I, I've seen on Fireflies, is was Jane really loyal to Captain Mal, or was it all about the money? How do you see your character there? Money. Uh, <laughs> it, Mal grew on him, in, in the uh, as the series unfolded, he um, obviously was in it for the money. But there was a betrayal of loyalty in that one episode called Ariel, uh, where I almost got airlocked. And early on, I was thinking. Jeez, I better make this character lovable because the first dinner that we had with Joss, he said, you know, this show's not called any of your characters. They're all expendable. <laughs> He's like, oh boy. Oh boy, so I better make Jane lovable. So I, when I first started reading the, the episode, uh-oh, I'm dead. I'm dead. It's too many characters anyway. Jane's the first to go. What was the question? <laughs> you answered it was, it was, is, was Jane truly loyal to Captain Mal or not? I mean, did he become that, do you think? Yeah, he didn't think he was doing wrong by, by dumping off the dock and his crazy sister. You know, they were, they were at a risk. Yeah. Right. That's trouble. And when you first started Firefly, did you have any idea how special that show would be for fans? Mm -hmm. We wish there were three million more of you. <laughs> But the loyalty that has come and lasted for 10 years now is, uh, gosh, it's been 10 years. We shot that in 02. So 10th anniversary of uh, Firefly. Uh, really amazing the love that's been carrying that, that show forward and into another generation. And I get kids coming up all the time to me and, and saying, we just love Firefly. You're gonna, you're gonna do more, right? And, uh, so I, I tweeted, like, if somebody won the Mega Millions and they were a Firefly fan, that they would, they would give us another, just, just write a check, come on. We actually had that conversation at work. Yeah. And somebody did mention that, and I said, oh, God, I think I'd do something with Firefly. You know? I would, I would. I didn't win, though. You, you did uh, webisodes for Chuck. Any hope of maybe some kind of Arrested Development's doing this thing with Netflix? Any talks there about maybe at least some webisodes of further adventures of the Firefly crew? Uh, of the fire, oh, gosh. It, it, again, that's in Joss's court. Joss has done the Avengers now, so that should looks to be a really, uh, really big movie. So <laughs> that could uh, that could help Joss's power. So anything to increase the Joss. <laughs> Go see that movie. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. 
Speaking of the Avengers, you know, you strike me as the kind of guy who should be in the Avengers universe. Uh, any any talks in that direction? As Josh said, hey, Adam, we want to get you over there somehow. We already made the movie. You, you don't have confidence there's going to be more than one of those things? I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb and say there's going to be a sequel to the Avengers. Which guy would I play? <laughs> who cares? Who's, Who's left? Who's left? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dear Joss. <laughs> I couldn't understand that either. <laughs> yes. Did you say Ant-Man? Ant-Man. Well, there's some irony for you. <laughs> Um, you've been part of several universes, um, you know, you're part of the X-Files, part of Firefly, you've been in all kinds of animated work in the superior universes. Is there, is there one that's your favorite in terms of uh, science fiction or the comic universes to be in? Favorite character? Yeah, I mean, w w something that maybe strikes a personal chord. Uh, for example, you're a fan before you're ever in the show. Uh, of, of X-Files? Anything. 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 Your questions are so complicated. Uh, well, I was always a, I, I always loved Star Trek. I loved I loved uh, I loved Shatner's bravado and, uh, and, and Spock's intellect. I, I had the honor of meeting Leonard Nimoy uh, in Phoenix, Arizona, last year, and what a nice, classy gentleman. He, uh, he, he we had a home up in Lake Tahoe while my mother-in-law lived up there, so we would go visit in the summertime. I it was my home, but my mother-in-law was there. Hi, Mom. Um, <laughs> Letter Nimoy has a, ho a home up there, too, so we would see his house there as our kids were going out to camp. And so we had something to talk about other than, you're, you're Mr. Spock. <laughs> you have a home in Lake Tahoe. Nobody says that to me. Let's talk. So it, was, it was a nice, nice little uh, entreaty, um, classy gentleman. So I would say Leonard Nimoy. <laughs> In short, did that answer your question? Your complicated, really tough questions because they're making me. It didn't at all, but okay. that's okay. <laughs> would, you ref would you mind rephrasing? I will rephrase the question. I was asking, is there a comic universe or a, uh, that, that general sci-fi universe out there that you would like to get into that you haven't been yet? Ah. <laughs> that's very different. <laughs> Can you give me an example? <laughs> well, it sounds like you'd like to be in the Star Trek reboot. Yes, yes, that would be fun. There we go. I'm just throwing you a bone on that. Much as I would dread sitting in that makeup chair for four or five hours every morning, all that stuff on, I think it would be fun to get all that stuff. Any sp specific character you'd like to play from the Star Trek universe? Villain or hero? Oh, villain, for sure. <laughs> But a lovable villain, a villain that you love to watch and see die. <laughs> I thought you were trying to keep yourself alive in these series. Now, sudden, it's, it's uh, you, want, you want yourself to die. As long as you die with glory. There you go. It's good. Yes. Hang on. I want to learn. I want to learn that language someday. You haven't learned it yet. I haven't learned it yet. No. Willing to take classes? I'm sure there's somebody in the audience who could teach you a bit of Klingon. <laughs> How do you say, uh, is there a phrase, I love you, in Klingon? No. <laughs> How much of your, you're mostly the sarcastic guy in all your shows, you've got great one-liners. Do they actually write those for you, or just, you just come up with those yourself? If Joss is writing them, Joss wrote them. Every other time is mine. Uh, how much of it's your person? I don't know. How much of your person? How, how many times do you get to do extemporanea? Uh, be fourteen, actually, exactly fourteen times per episode. Per episode, per, total, I, per series. I picked that number from air and just said fourteen times. How important was being on Chuck for you? Really important. <laughs> I love Chuck because Zach Levi is tall and Yvonne Strahovski is tall, and when I saw them in the uh, in the, uh, the casting session, I thought. God, I hope he gets Chuck because he's tall. Because then I got a better shot than that short guy. Uh, and it's true, I did. 
we hired the, they hired the short guy out for a guest spot. Bad guy killed him. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Chuck was five years of work. Firefly was only a, uh, half a year of work. So it was uh, a very opportune time for me because my, my kid was in college, so it helped finance that. So <laughs> these are the, the practical applications of working. <sighs> for those of you parents out there who know, my kid graduated, I got a raise, perfect. Speaking of that, Summer Glau was uh, the, on the panel right before here, and she said you were the daddy of the set of Firefly. Is that how you envisioned yourself? No, I was like the, uh, the grumpy uncle. I would say that uh, Ron Glass was the papa. He was, he was our wise, uh, grizzled veteran. And I remember the first dinner we had, I said, so what does it take, Ron, to keep a show like this going without any animosity between the cast members? Keep it about the work. <laughs> ah. So we tried, we did. And we were under the gun from the get-go, and so we all worked our butts off to make as good a product as we could. And thank you for supporting it. <laughs> we need three million more of you. <laughs> Not your fault. Not your fault. There really is two of uh, your biggest series there, Chuck and Firefly, were kept alive by fans. That's, that's got to be a huge, huge boost for you. Fans and Subway sandwiches. <laughs> Either way, it works. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, you worked with Stanley Kubrick and uh, Joss Whedon. Tell us about working with Kubrick and how that was different from working with Joss. <laughs> Joss. <laughs> Can't speak ill of the dead. Uh, <laughs> not Joss. Cooper. Cooper's dead. <laughs> Well, Joss was very hands-on as far as performance would go. If you ever had trouble figuring out a rhythm or uh, a line, because he would write things in Chinese sometimes, how the hell do we do this? Uh, he would be right there hands-on. Stanley was more of a standoffish guy. Just do it again, and again, and again. You suck. Do it again. <laughs> So Joss was more of a confidence builder, performance-wise, for us, and uh, Stanley was more of a long-term guy, and uh, it was an honor to work with both. And they're brilliant, and just, in my mind, giants of, of cinema, so. In your role in My Bodyguard, I think a lot of young people were really related to Linderman being the great protector. Do you, uh, do you still get a lot of fans coming up to you talking to you about that role and, and its meaning? I think there's a good chance for a reboot on my, on my Bodyguard. It was a great story about friendship and it's timely with, with bullying going on so much in the news these days. And it's, uh, I think there are, there are bullying policies in schools. You know, I've, I've raised three kids, so I've, I've been through them and I'm in school once uh, so that it goes on so it would be nice to highlight that the problem with my bodyguard reboot is that the resolution is a fist fight which I don't know would play so well I talked to a teacher earlier and she said gosh it's such a nice movie love to get that uh, shown to my kids and I said well you know your principal would probably have to sign off on the fist fight part resolution and she said nah, it'll never fly because, you know, I, when I was a kid, we would go to the park and, at 3.15 and we would duke it out. And you'd get some bloody noses. And then if there was a problem, the dads would get together and say, Listen, your son beat up my son, and I'm going to beat you up, or whatever. <laughs> so, or they would end up making a shake, you know, shake hands and never let it happen again. Okay, Dad, that's fine. I remember I did that once with my dad, and we, as we were walking away, he goes, you know, that kid's dad's a... <laughs> Is this on? Oh, good. It's on. What's been the highlight of your career so far, for you personally? Sitting here, right now. <laughs> Sitting 
second highlight? I would say the highlight of my career has been rooms like this. I've been in maybe a hundred rooms like this with people like you, sending love my way or with uh, Summer, if she's sitting on the panel. I've done it with Chuck, I've done it with Firefly, and it's, it's, it means more to me than just dancing around on a set, creating a character, figuring out what the props do. That's fun, but this, this is the feedback you don't get when you work in film, so I really appreciate, uh, again, the love that you throw our way. It's right back to it. Was that, was that, was that, was that, was that good, good pandering? pandering? Sorry. I'll be running for office soon. Not in, not in this city, but... Thank God. <laughs> I wouldn't make it in this city, but I said I can't make contribution elsewhere. Uh, Christopher Judge of Stargate fame, I was uh, interviewing him on my radio program, and he said that uh, the key to your heart was scotch. And I thought, for fans, what bottle should they send? Good scotch is good in small amounts. Bad scotch in large amounts, not so good. Um, I just like a little taste of it. Why did he mention last night? <laughs> He's not awake yet. <laughs> um, how, how much of, uh, what's been the most meaningful experience with an individual fan so far uh, with you? This one. <laughs> I don't know. It's been the second I don't know. It's, it's hard to, uh, how do you pinpoint one? I love meeting children when children come up with their parents and, and there's that generational connection. Uh, I met a uh, guy named Herb yesterday. Uh, I don't know if Herb's out there or if his son is out there, but he's this great old guy and he was just, just happy to be there. And, uh, so to see the gen, like I said, an old guy three or four year old kid or the, the bright eyes of a baby just going, what the heck? Where am I? I love that. How Don't ask me what the weirdest example is because I won't be able to answer that. It's this one. Um, how You're not that weird. <laughs> Now I forgot what I was going to ask the follow-up question. Yes! Got him! You got me. You got me. How, um, you know, you're a rarity among actors. You, I follow you on Twitter. You're a conservative guy. How has that, uh, if at all, impacted your acting career? Or how does that impact your, your reception in Hollywood? Next question. <laughs> it's that good. It's just not appropriate here. We're talking about other stuff. Nobody. It's your Twitter feed. Go there. All right, fine. What's been the, the performance that you've enjoyed the most? Uh, the most fun I ever had working probably was on, on Firefly. I think because it was nine months, nine months of hard work. And then, scratch that, rewind. Serenity, the movie, because it was redemption for a show that had died, basically. It had been killed off, and Joss's willpower and brought it back to life and that's one of the most joyous things I ever witnessed was day one scene one roll one marker to see the look I was watching Joss's face when that happened by and he was just <sighs> <sighs> he was so happy he had worked so hard to get it back up in the air and then the work on the movie was just great. Hard, fun, physical, hilarious. What do you look for in a role? Money. <laughs> 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 Who doesn't? Uh, I think it was Michael Caine that said he does three movies. It was either Michael Caine or uh, another great actor who I can't remember right now. Who was the guy from Silence of the Lambs that played the bad guy? Anthony Hopkins. Anthony Hopkins. It was either Michael Caine or Anthony Hopkins who said I do three movies a year, one for location, one for art, and one for money. And that would be the ideal sort of actor's job. You could do that. Now, television is good steady work, and that's fun, and that's ideal for a family guy like me. So, but what do I look for in a role? The tall guy. I don't know. Uh, humor, if it's funny. 
You were in uh, Independence Day. Uh, <laughs> memorable there. Any experiences on that set that you can share? <laughs> we were doing, uh, uh, we were out on the Bonneville Salt Flats and it was 130 degrees in the sun. And for some reason we're hunkering under a tent and everyone was chugging Gatorade just to stay hydrated and the, and the medic was passing out emergencies to make sure everybody wouldn't pass out. And for some reason, Jeff Goldblum and Judd Hirsch broke out in a Jewish death of the salesman. <laughs> and they just started riffing and I thought, this is surreal. We're out here in the middle of nowhere, it's 130 degrees, and they're going, biff, what? <laughs> There's Billy. I don't know. I don't know where Billy is. Back and forth. And we're just... just. And Will Smith is going, I don't need these guys. That was wild. The other thing was, uh, when I shot the alien through the, the glass, the alien had these tentacles off on the side. I told the story before, but the tentacles are flapping off to the side like this. The way they do that is they have production assistants just out of frame going like this, flapping the tentacles, flapping the tentacles. If you're flapping tentacles like that for half an hour, 45 minutes, your shoulders get really tired. Roland Emmerich, the director, saw that. And so <laughs> he's sitting behind the monitor going, fast him with the tentacles, fast him with the tentacles, more tentacle flapping, do it. <laughs> So, just not afraid, you got these productions going, oh my god, my shoulders! Help! So they would trade off. We were just sitting in the chair, busting up, laughing at those guys. Yeah, that was funny. It reminds me of the time when I rode through on Patriot, on the horse, and all my friends are down in the dirt. They're like, yeah, you get to ride the horse, don't you? I go, yeah. Pays to be a loyalist. <laughs> Hot down there? Yeah. And buddy. <laughs> what was it like on the cast of uh, Angel, being a recurring character there? Well, David Boreanaz is a, a tough, strong, a funny guy. And he was very challenging for me when I came on there as uh, Marcus Hamilton. And we got along great. He, he got along so great, he hired me again on Bones later, so I did something right. But, you know, it was his show and it's his territory, so he's testing me out, testing the water, saying, you got what it takes, you got what it takes. I'm, yeah, okay, I'll push back, because you know, I had Josh sort of in my corner, and I figured he had hired me on, so I belong here, and I just play this stuff. So, yeah. And it was, that's the kind of stuff that I love to watch, too, is if you got two guys who feel confident that they can both stand there and do the, you know, that's, that's, that's fun. And we had an epic fight scene at the end to close that show out. Almost got him, I just almost this close to him. Crushing angel, but no. Josh! <laughs> In real life, could you take him? <laughs> That's not what we're here for. <laughs> we got two microphones on each side. If fans want to want to ask a question, you should line up now and uh, get ready for that. There's a microphone right over there and a microphone right over there. Um, Compared to uh, Joss's uh, television series of movies, they seem to have this lighthearted quality and everybody's having a great time, and whether it's Firefly or Angel or Buffy the Vampire Slayer. But you're also a recurring uh, character in The X-Files. The X-Files kind of gives off this very dour, the world is a very depressing and scary place mood. And I was wondering what the comparison uh, was like working on the sets, if, if there's any, uh, there any overlap or, or the, were they really that different? Uh picture that just came up. Someone came over to the table earlier. I don't know if you can zoom in on the camera here, but it's kind of a cool picture. It's not that one. It's, it's this one. You see that? There he is. No roar, roar, roar. Say that name three times fast. No roar, no roar, no roar. They used to make fun of me. You have the stupidest name. <laughs> But Sorry, I guess I, what was the question? Yeah. Uh, compared to the lightheartedness that you've described on the cast of Firefly and other Joss productions, I was wondering how that was, was it different on the X-Files or was it generally the same kind of camaraderie? 
a lot of camaraderie in the ca and those crews worked so hard and it was mostly night shoots they they worked 16 hour days as much as they can through the through the night the vampires but the cohesion and, and the uh, the camaraderie that that brings with it is, is something to behold and I didn't come in until later I think season seven or eight I didn't show up so they were a well-oiled machine by then Remember when I first showed up, we were out in some woods, like the Disney woods or something like that, and it was this episode where uh, the Gillian Anderson's character, Sc uh, Scully, right? Scully was giving birth to an alien. I was like, okay, this is your first episode? Awesome. Great. <laughs> Dive in. <laughs> and then the director was yelling. He was a yeller, uh, the late, great uh, Kim Matters. He, uh, he was yelling at me, but winking all the time. He said, I'm a yeller, but I just took to make people crazy. Watch. Action! That sucks! Do it again! <laughs> Let's start with this microphone right over here. Oh, hi, Adam. Hi. <laughs> I'm a really big fan, first of all. Um, I had a, a two-part question. One is, when you go to conventions like this or events and you see all the people with their Jane hats, their homemade Jane hats, um, what do you think of that? And also, can you please sing The Hero of Canton? <laughs> Joss made me promise never to sing that again. If you need to see it, go to YouTube. <sighs> but I'm a crappy singer. You don't want to hear me singing that dumb song, do you? originals knitted by uh, a person who worked in the office and I kept the hero one and auctioned it off for uh, the Marine Corps Law Enforcement Foundation and it brought $5,000 for charity so that's good and I have a replica that's a really good replica like yours sitting on a bust of the replica of the Janestown statue and so I appreciate it's become this iconic uh, sci-fi thingy that I'm attached to, so I like it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hi. I was wondering, what's it like being confused with the Baldwin brothers, and have you ever met them? <laughs> I see no downside. <laughs> I, I have worked with Stephen and Billy, and I've met Daniel several times and uh, we're friends and Alec I met one time and uh, we don't really know each other we're not acquainted but I respect them as actors immensely they're very talented they're a very uh, loyal family and I just have to respect that and as far as uh, you know it my name being spelled the same way that's that's fine it's a great conversation starter see <laughs> hey Adam hey Unlike Jane, um, I got my hat from my daughter. Right. <laughs> she made me wear it today. Uh-huh. <laughs> so if this whole acting thing wouldn't have worked out for you, what do you see yourself doing today? Um, I probably would have been in the garment industry. Uh, <laughs> hats? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hats, haberdashery. <laughs> God. I don't know, maybe um, this couch is really low, dude. <laughs> you got the high chair. Um, what would I be doing? I don't know. I don't know. It's 33 years now, so it's hard for me to go back and reboot. Uh, I got some friends who do uh, firearms training that I would have loved to be involved in that. I mean, so acting was your only goal ever? To what? Who what? Acting was the only thing you ever had planned on doing in life? Well, being a parent and having a marriage, a successful, happy marriage for 23 years, raising three kids. <laughs> That's my biggest surprise. So, 
you know, being, being a dad is, is something that, that uh, I do and have done, and it's, uh, I recommend it. All right, thank you. But something to do with guns, I think, <laughs> would be the, the right answer. Hi, Adam. Um, so, but, through your career, obviously, we've seen you play some strong, capable men. Yeah. If Animal Mother, Jane Cobb, and Colonel Casey were in a brawl without weapons, who would triumph and who would fall first? The young guy would win. <laughs> <laughs> The 23 year old, he'd kick their ass. <laughs> um, if it was just fisticuffs, you know, I think. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry, did I not answer your question? So, animal mother, you're saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, who would fall first? Who would fall first? The old guy. <laughs> Thank you. Jane would run. What's your favorite gun? You mean, you mean weapon, right? Whatever. Anyway. Um, <laughs> my gun is my favorite. Um, Details. It's, it's fine. Um, <laughs> I don't know, specifically, there, there's so many. But a good one would be, uh, say, a Ruger Mini-14. That's a good, uh, capable rifle. Um, I recommend that. <laughs> maybe, maybe an AR-15. That'd be good too. That'd be helpful. Or a 308 on an AR platform. That would be good. With an Alcan scope, a six-to-one Alcan scope. That'd be good. Where's the, where's the door kicker? Uh, as far as sidearms go, I like the HK-45, that's a good, that's a good sidearm. Um, I, got a cop, I got a cop friend who said, he was asked, what's your favorite sidearm? And he goes, whichever one gets me back to my primary. <laughs> your primary is your rifle, right? Does that answer your question? Thank you. The M60 is a nice gun, too. <laughs> It's also known as the pig, military terminology. Um, yeah, that's much M134 minigun, it's 3,400 rounds per minute. I got to fire one of those, but only with blanks on uh, Chuck. I think he has a question. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, little Bubba, what's your name? Jeff. Hi, Jeff. What's your question? It's a big honor to be talking to you. Thank you. Honor, the honor is mine. Come here. Come here. Son. <laughs> here, come over there. Give me no, give me your hand. Shake my hand. So What's your question? Speak here. Right here. Sit. I have two questions. Okay. One was, if you gone against the judge from Stargate SG-1, would you would you think you would win? And the second one, what's your favorite Chuck? Uh, favorite. Favorite Chuck. Yeah. Episode. Yeah. Uh, well, I'll answer, the, I'll answer your second second question first. My favorite Chuck episode would be uh, Chuck versus the Couch Lock, where I got to be uh, sort of, uh, where I was pretending to be dead, and I got to put on the Marine dress dress blue uniform and lie in a coffin and pretend to be dead. And uh, Eric Roberts came back and he guessed it on that show, so we had a lot of fun on that. And uh, Christopher Judge, who would win? You mean in real life? Ah, uh, you don't fight your friends. I wouldn't. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Appreciate it. Give me a high five. High five. Uh, nice job. Yes, sir. Yes, Hi. Hi. 
Um, I also have a check question. Yeah. Um, as far as John Casey is, he was badass, thanks for that. Um, um, I always felt like he had kind of like that softiness to him from the beginning, and then, you know, he got the daughter and he got softer. And as far as developing that character went, how easy was it and why? Or hard was it and why? It's funny, I kept, I kept asking the uh, writers and producers, that he gets to kill more people, right, in this yeah. episode? <laughs> We're gonna kill more people in this episode, right? No, 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 you're gonna meet your daughter. <laughs> And you're gonna have coffee with her. And you're gonna be fans of Downton Abbey. And really? Casey, really? Okay. Uh. Uh, it was nice to have an arc built in at the end. He was sort of one dimensional in the first. Uh, early going and they, they needed to walk that line and keep a serious element to it because you're doing a show, an action comedy, about a guy with a computer in his head. Yeah. With all the huge government secrets that so dangerous to fall into the bad guy's hands and we're just gonna let him run around and do missions and stuff and get shot at. So Casey at least had to be a guy who could knock a guy down or potentially take uh, Chuck out yeah. or Sarah out, but again, like in Firefly, I made him so lovable they couldn't get rid of me. <laughs> and what are you gonna do after three, four, five years? I gotta develop this guy somehow. Let's give him a daughter. Maybe we'll meet his mom. We almost kind of met his mom in one episode where, and I'm belt feeding her on an M60. I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> <gasps> what? What? You want to know more or what? No, no. Okay, good. Okay, good. Okay, good. Okay, good. Okay, good. Okay, that was a good question. That was a good question. Give her a hand. Give her a hand. How much of Jane did you put into Casey? Huh. <laughs> All of them. <laughs> I don't know how to do anything else. I can only do Jane or Casey. Um, don't agree with me. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, I mean, me is me. What am I going to do? Uh, I think I tried to drop some subtle little uh, Easter eggs, but they're different guys once completely untrustworthy mercenary, the other one's completely, by the book, straight up patriot, so uh, they're different. They talk a little different. One, one, had, one got an accent, the other one doesn't. <laughs> but they both grunt. Uh, the grunts. I use the grunts. <laughs> okay. But I would prefer not to shave every day. I, I prefer to have the scruff on, because shaving, as we all know, is not Pleasant. I hear like a hell they have to shave your face. <laughs> Ladies. We do we do appreciate it though. Yes sir. I actually have two questions for you. One was, what is your favorite recurring joke on any of the sets you've been on? And, like, offset or on set with the cast. And how many takes did it take to do the Summer Glow Jane River fight scene in the movie? <laughs> well, our favorite running joke on Firefly was blaming Summer for anything that would go wrong. <laughs> By far. And Nathan, Nathan came up with that one. We would all eventually use it. Summer! <laughs> What's the matter? Did you forget your line? Yeah, it's your fault! <laughs> I'm sorry. She's so, she's, so, she's so sweet. And when we were doing that fight scene, there was a portion of the fight in Serenity with Summer and I that where she had to mm, disable me. <laughs> She was feeling a little reluctant for the camera. Was like, just come on, just bury it in there. Come on, go ahead. I got panic. It's okay. 
So when you watch the scene again, you're like, see, where in the cup? <laughs> I see it, I see the cup. <laughs> but the, that fight scene took, I don't know, three or four weeks to choreograph. They were working on that from the get-go. And it was this long, involved thing. I thought she was just brilliant. Summer Glau, ladies and gentlemen. Why is she not out here with me doing a co-panel? <laughs> Next year. Thanks a lot. Yeah, hi. I've been a fan of yours since The Bodyguard, and I figure it probably was hard getting roles when you were taller. I mean, you look at Tom Cruise and Brad Pitt, they're really not that small, you know, tall. But um, one thing I wanted to say was, as far as your three million fans, I think what they can't calculate is that Firefly was one of those shows, and I love being a parent, and I love that you love being a parent, your whole family watches. So it's not one television, it's one television set, but it's four or five or six people watching it, and generations, and thank you for that. <laughs> and, then, and then my question for you, if you had a point in any, because I know John Hughes probably was something you probably tried out for and maybe didn't get, if you could do a John Hughes or a Ridley Scott, which way would you go? Well... They're both great. One's more comedy and one's more action. I think they're both fantastic. Uh, the late, great John Hughes. Um, that would be the determining factor. Money. <laughs> Funny and money. Uh, <laughs> when Firefly first aired, it was on Friday nights at 8, dead spot. Friday nights at 8, and Friday nights at 5.30, my kids had dance class. My daughters had dance class. I mean, anybody see Dance Moms? <laughs> you wouldn't think I would watch that show. I love it. Oh, I love that show because it brings back such memories of uh, you know, the, the goings on in the, uh, the observation room. Our, uh, our dance instructor, though, could actually dance. <laughs> it's true. I mean, come on. Miss Abby doesn't do much dancing in that show, does she? I know she can. I know she can. I know. Maybe in her younger years. Anyway. It, so we would race home after dance class and turn on Firefly. And when that theme song hit, you know, my kids were like three and f six and nine. And it was just nice to see them, you know, when Dead Jake came her. The kids were like, this daddy! <laughs> but it was one of the few shows that I could actually sit and watch with them. Chuck was like that too, but that one was really special because they were so little and innocent. It was hard explaining to them when it was canceled. It's Christ Merry Christmas. <laughs> Had Daddy the McAllen 18. Hi. Um, in high school, I had an English class that taught the structure of creative writing through Firefly. And it taught me a lot about how to write, and it affected how I do a lot of things. What do you think about? Firefly being used to teach these young people who are eventually going to grow up to be the ones writing. I think that's great. Joss, Joss's structure and his team of writers, their structure was just fantastic. If you can get your hands on the screenplays themselves, which apparently you have, and read through them, they, they read, just, they flow from, you know, Act 1, Prologue, Act, act 1, Act 2, Act 3, and Epilogue. Uh, and the dialogue, I mean, the dialogue was just so fun. So much fun to play. I think that's, that's as a writer, my pet peeve is having to do exposition, explain the story. On Chuck, we had General Beckman, on uh, Charlie's Angels and Charlie, basically explain the story so that the main characters don't have to explain the story. I think that's always wonderful. Uh, so focus on telling the story with the visuals, finding uh, an, ex an expositor, the, the exposition guy. Uh, and let that be that device and let your main characters just run around and play. And then learn about their lives. Cool. So you. try that, I guess. Not a writer. <laughs> Obviously. Thank you. Got it. Next. Sir. 
Hi. Uh, I have a Mass Effect question. Um, you were uh, did a voice for Carl Reeker in Mass Effect 2. And I was, yeah. He last like. Yeah, he did. Uh, and I was curious, um, first of all, did you have any notable experiences while doing voice acting uh, on that particular project? And more specifically, uh, the Korean race has a very particular accent, but your character was Jane the Korean. Did they have you try the accent at all, or did they just say, you know what, just, we love Jane, just be Jane. Just do Jane. Okay. Yeah. Maybe that's, hey, maybe that's why I'm not in Mass Effect 3, I didn't do the right accent. Well, I did, I got an email from you in Mass Effect 3, and you didn't, you didn't do too well. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I died. Apparently. Oh. Yeah. Sorry, spoiler alert. Oh. <laughs> oh! Boo! <laughs> oh. We did hear about it in an email, though. It's not secret. It's not a secret. <laughs> um. <laughs> well, the funny thing about voiceover work is, especially for games, is you come in and you do a sequence of cues, and and then you do uh, some of the script and the storyline, but they, they jump around as, as, as I'm not a gamer, so uh, they change the storyline as you play through the game, so linearly I, my brain can't wrap my mind around it having not played the game, just having read, read the thing, you know, so money, it was a money thing. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, hi. Hi. You're wearing my shirt. This, did you give this to me? That was me. Thank you. I just, yeah. You get panel. You're gonna get panel now. Hi, what's your name? My name is Margaret. Margaret, nice to meet you. Thank you for the shirt. Thank you for wearing it. Damn it. <laughs> no, I, hope, I hope you never make it again. I hope you're never on it again. Never on what again? The shirt, the back of the shirt. Did you oh, show, that, did you, right, right, right. Did you show them in the back? I, 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 I haven't, I haven't. I will. When we're done. Okay, yeah. I was gonna show him at the end. I'll show him at the end. <laughs> Don't you leave. Tell you what, explain <laughs> what it is. So, so I, can, I can just tell them. Yeah, just tell them. I, I came up with this idea a while ago after being a fan of Josh Whedon's works for a very long time. Um, I started with Buffy, and you know, there are um, lots of deaths in Whedon's <laughs> shows. Um, on the back of their shirt are over 40 names. <laughs> Most of the people that, you know, we're going to miss are there. There are a few people that didn't warrant um, being there. Like, I, I didn't put Warren there. Like this guy. He doesn't deserve it. But there are, uh, yeah. Marcus from Angel is, is on it, which is, he's wearing it now. And I, I also, I gave one to Summer for Bennett. But. Well, it's an honor to be on your shirt, damn it. It's an honor. I'm, I'm so glad you're wearing it right now. Right. It's awesome. And is this shirt available I, it stores? will be. I, I've been told by many people that I should open an Etsy store, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I will get on that. Get right on that. Yes. Thank you very much. It's nice to meet you. Thanks for the shirt. Pleasure. I think that's the last question we have time for, isn't it? Yeah, one more. We have time for one more. One more. Hello. Hello. I have to say, great fan of Firefly, and I'm full metal jacket. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have a couple, well, I guess one question. It's April Fool's Day, so appropriate. Um, what would be your, the best April Fool's joke you played, and what was the best one played on you? <laughs> <laughs> Not much of a prankster. Uh, I don't know, I probably lied about something. Uh, shucks, put me on the spot. I don't know, I saw, I saw something in the Twitter feed, so I put that up earlier today that I was cast as Reagan in a movie. I cast as Reagan in a movie, I think that was, that was pretty good. Some people fought, like, really? <laughs> uh, but it was such a poorly written article, it's like, ah, there's no way that's real. What so, are you, that. What are you doing next? Uh, I have a castle episode that I did. that I did with Nathan. The, the folks at Castle were kind enough to invite me to come on for an episode because they knew that Chuck was no longer, so 
I get to play this character named Ethan Slaughter. We're hopeful that he will become uh, something that can carry forward because he was just so much, so much damn fun to play. Anyway, Seattle, I love you. Thank you for having me. You have a great city.